Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. .1. In this video I'm going to launch the shuttle and attempt to bring it through re-entry safely. In previous videos in 1.8.1 .1, I managed to launch it fine, but re-entry was a problem. And I have a theory about why re-entry we had that role problem and I'll talk about that during the launch of the shuttle. But you'll also notice that the shuttle seems to be very far above the ground. And there is a reason for that, and rather than telling you, I'm going to show you. So here we go, launch. Okay, so here we are at long last. Cape Canaveral looks like this. Thanks to Katniss Cape Canaveral that is available on the forums, requires the latest RSS textures as well as uh, real solar system itself, of course, the latest versions of those. It obviously requires quite uh, an amount of resources. The structures on here, however, are from real launch sites, uh, which is an older mod. And yeah, I manually placed those, so I had to tweak them. I don't know if I've got the orientation exactly right. I did the best that I could, but uh, real launch sites doesn't work in 1.8.1. Uh, it would have placed those things automatically otherwise, so, but I brought the models in and put them myself. So that's how I did that. I also decided to put the real launch site's runway in the place of the shuttle landing facility there. So yeah, we've got the cape, and I'm proud of myself. <laughs> so uh, it's not going to be easy to do this if you're going like, it, it can, it's not, it's not going to be easy to explain in any way. Just for testing purposes, we're lining up with the International Space Station. Okay, so here we go. And I'll probably drop the HUD during the launch, but you know, let me get the script started. Alright, let's see what's the best angle. There we go. Things you never thought you'd see in KSP. Yep, looking good. And I tried to make... Uh, inspired by this, I tried to import, because uh, I've got photo scenery for Edwards Air Force Base and Boca Chica. I tried to import them and that didn't work right. So uh, the maker of this mod, Katniss's uh, Cape Canaveral, did some fancy work making this happen. It's not so simple with uh, Kerbal Constructs or anything. It took some doing and I cannot easily duplicate it. Otherwise I would, at least for Edwards and Boca Chica. Let's see, how about that view? The booster should be going soon. At least, there we go. Uh, there's always the pause when stagings happen though. That's sad. But anyway, alright. Okay, HUD back up. Or UI back up, I should say, not HUD. And hopefully we timed it right to make a good rendezvous with the station. Our inclination with respect to it is decreasing. Closest approach distance is actually pretty darn close. We'll probably end up right behind it, so that's ideal. We're carrying Space Lab though, nothing for the station in particular. Okay, we're doing the shuttle roll maneuver here. Uh, those black spots, I don't know what's up with that. Maybe they're si supposed to be city textures? I don't know. There's something wrong there. But uh, that'll be fixed in about 5 kilometers of altitude once we hit the, hit the edge of space. There we go. Now it's looking a little bit better. But yeah, 
it's not all perfect. Oh, and initially I had a little bit of a problem not being able to launch from the pad, uh, from the new pad instead of the regular KSC pad, and it turns out that you need to create a new save for that, which is complicated because I also wanted the International Space Station as I had built it in the previous version, so I think if uh, this was originally an imported save from 1.3.1 and I had to do some finagling in the persistent file in order to make sure that I could launch from the pad and still there's some issues so yep there's still issues <laughs> it is an imperfect system still okay the timing is looking pretty good right now everything is spot on Just a matter of how it handles the external tank separation bit. It needs to make sure that we end up with a periapsis that's low enough. Alright, that's a good periapsis for external tank disposal. Need to work on how that decouples. Uh, the shuttle does an RCS maneuver to get away from the external tank, but. I don't have the script duplicating that. Okay, we've got a soft glow from the setting sun. We have a lot less delta V in this version than in 1.3.1. No, well, not a lot less because of the changes I made, but um, I'll have to review that. And during re-entry that causes problems because it uses more RCS than I would like it to during re-entry to handle itself. So, the fix. So, here's the problem, as far as I have come to understand it. The reason it's rolling is because FAR does not like having two separate wing parts. It's used to having them being symmetrically placed, right? When you normally place wing parts in Kerbal Space Program, you put it on one side and it's symmetrized on the opposite side. Um, it really, really doesn't like it that this is one piece and this is another piece. And I think it's sort of reading this piece, uh, one of the pieces wrong. It's maybe flipping it in a weird way. It's expecting it to be oriented in... Uh, I think uh, the normal orientation is the one on the left. And it's sort of reading it upside down or something. I don't know. I, I haven't quite figured it out myself, but all I know is that it happens with my planes too. Let me change the camera view. Uh, it happens with my planes too. That if I have them be two separate wing pieces, it does this roll, has this roll issue. If you're using, if you apply the module called FAR aerodynamic model on the wings, or on the elevons in this case, because they have the same conundrum. Um, so I've taken the FAR aerodynamic model off of it and restored the original modular lifting surface, which is the default module. That doesn't entirely mean that FAR is clueless about them. Um, that doesn't mean that they don't do aerodynamic things. They will do aerodynamic things. Uh, the, but it won't be possible for FAR to do its calculations with them, right? Because, uh, you know, the back end, when you go to the SPH, it has all that calculated information. You can't do that without having the FAR aerodynamic model on it, I think. So, but FAR in theory should be able to figure it out with the modular lifting surface because after all, not all parts are configured with the FAR aerodynamic model, you know. So it has to be able to deal with the aerodynamics even if that module isn't on the part. But that's a whole business. So, I removed the far aerodynamic model and restored the modular lifting surface to the wing pieces and the elevon pieces. And that seems to stop the roll. But there's another problem. Uh, we don't have enough drag like that. Uh, it seems like we just don't have enough drag. So I've made some adjustments and we'll see if I've gotten enough drag this time. But I'm not sure. So that is why we test. Uh, now the station is right in front of us, which is fortuitous. Nice flame. Uh, it's very sort of cinematic effect right now. 
at night time especially. Unfortunately, the Kagobe lights don't work. This is actually the Dylan Semro uh, version of the shuttle, which unfortunately is not craft compatible with the other two, uh, the original Deku one or the one that I introduced in the shuttle installation video. Uh, but the problems that the shell has in Realism Overhaul are down to the Realism Overhaul configurations and it doesn't seem anything particularly to do with the original parts. So, yeah, the roll problem and that business, that's all down to figuring out in the Realism Overhaul configurations. If you do use the Dylan Semro version, you have to delete a file from the Realism Overhaul configurations that come with Realism Overhaul. There's a texture um, changer configuration file that allows you to change it from Atlantis to Challenger to Columbia, but the mod itself already has that, so they'll conflict with each other if you keep that file in Realism Overhaul. So you'll have to delete that if you use this version. If you install it the way I did in the shuttle installation video, that won't be a problem. Okay, that's close enough. We're just gonna fly by the station. We're not gonna match orbits with it. Again, the Delta V stuff on this is, it's a little bit tight. So again, uh, we're not going to match speeds, we'll just let it fly by. Uh, it's not quite oriented in the right direction. A uh, safe distance. Okay, anyway. So, retrograde. Bring ourselves back to a more standard orbit for the re-entry script. That's overdoing it. Oh, do we still have it at... Uh... Oh yeah, that's too much of a max stopping time. Now, the dynamics are a little bit different because we are carrying the cargo and the bay back down, the space lab, than if we were coming back down empty or mostly empty. Okay, and getting back to the KSC should be the next time around. So, we will activate the re-entry script. No, make sure it's in here. It is, though, a work in progress, obviously. Okay, we have ignition. Oh, I probably need to close the cargo bay. We've got six crew. We've spent a day. It seems like we have a lot of supplies. Hmm. Especially a lot of oxygen. Uh, considering I didn't even start the LOX gaseous oxygen converter here. Hmm. We were under attack life support right now. So it should be nominal realism overall configurations. Okay, it's pointed in the right way, but it always overdoes roll at this point, and I'll have to figure out why. Puffs a lot. I don't want it to use that much gas, or monomethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide, really. It's not supposed to be mixed oxides of nitrogen, but... So I'll put caps lock on. I wish I knew what the equivalent in KOS would be to putting caps lock on. Whoa. Uh, we'll have to wait until it starts moving in the opposite direction to caps lock it otherwise. That's more than I've ever seen it do too. I usually expect it to go like maybe 90 degrees at most, but it went beyond that. People ask me why I don't have it roll to do S turns. Well, this is why, sort of. 
I'm sure there's a way to tune the PID properly so it doesn't overdo things, but I haven't figured that out yet myself. So I've applied caps lock and then I'll let it drift to the opposite side a bit and then take off caps lock so it starts puffing to correct again. And then I'll have to take it off caps lock once we get lower so that it has the full authority with the RCS. The control surfaces really only have a huge effect below 45 kilometers. Which makes the fact that it had its roll problem at like 90 kilometers really weird too. Which means that it was a pretty severe thing. Somebody had asked during a live stream uh, why it didn't experience a roll problem during launch, but that's because the main engines are so powerful that you know, they can counteract any roll very easily, but without any engine power going on, seems like it's a pretty strong thing going on. Something to do with the fact that the wings aren't in symmetry is my best guess. I've checked the center of mass and center of lift on the wings themselves, they are in the right place. So they are, you know, balanced with respect to each other in terms of center of lift and center of mass. And same with the elebons. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know why FAR does seem to have a problem with it, and the stock module does not. Unlike normal airfoils in Kerbal Space Program, these are not symmetric in this axis, right? They have the, the curvature on the top, and they're flat on the bottom. That makes them different from other kinds of wings. Any other wing that you'd basically use in Kerbal Space Program would be symmetrical top to bottom, like a very thin airfoil, like an F-104 style deal. But this is similar to some of the planes I've made in Blender and brought in. And they all seem to have the roll problem when I do the wings this way. Somebody suggested making the wing into one piece at the bottom. I don't know if that will work out better. It depends on what the spe uh, specific problem is. Well, we're pretty well balanced so far. Out of all things, the roll is perfectly centered, so that's delightful. Um, the yaw being off is... Uh, a little bit weird, but okay. Pitch is to be expected. There's always going to be a little bit of pitch correction in this case. But we are on fine controls and it's barely using any of that uh, control range. But the, the yaw is irritating. Uh, but that's similar to in 1.3.1. It was the yaw that was the problem and which forced me to eventually take it off of caps lock. And in 1.3.1 I had to take it off of caps lock at around 75 kilometers altitude, so we'll see. It's actually looking pretty good at 75 kilometers right now. We're looking good as far as our path is concerned. Question is just a matter of whether we get there on time. Okay, Baja California here. We do not seem to be on track. Well, no, we popped up too much. We got too much lift is the problem, as expected. Yeah, we're overshooting by quite a lot. Uh, we're at 45 degrees west. You can see where we are in relation to Florida. And we're still too high by a lot. So more will need to be done, but progress has been made. And more will need to be done in the configuration because the script is the same as in 1.3 and I would like to keep that as consistent as possible. Uh, it's obvious that the shuttle model itself just needs a little bit more drag. And there are multiple ways of doing that. Oh, uh, I need to take it off caps lock now. Okay, 
I think there's a deliberate turn that it's trying to do because it knows that it's passing Cape Canaveral by too much. Um, we have overheating because we didn't get enough drag earlier on. And that leads us to be faster at a lower altitude. So we get more heat like that. We'll see if it causes any actual damage. Uh, there's Cape Canaveral again. I mean, of course, the cheap way of doing this would be to just start the retro burn earlier by however many degrees we end up being too far away, but that would not be the proper way of doing this. We need to fix the aerodynamics a little bit better. So the problem is the use of RCS here. And really it's all this yaw wiggling that I don't entirely understand. So I'll have to refine how it handles that bit. And that's down to the reentry script. Uh, we are way off. 20 degrees. <laughs> Look at that. No, that's not good. Okay, still well controlled during this phase, despite caps lock. We're getting close to where the control surfaces will work, so... And that's positive. Roll has been wonderful. <laughs> I mean, uh, well, uh, it certainly seems like removing the far dy dynamic model has saved us from the roll issue. I should note that the far aerodynamic model is still on the shuttle tail control surface and the vertical stabilizer. I'll let you decide whether that's causing the yaw issue, but it shouldn't. Uh, in my theory, that shouldn't be the cause. One thing that could be the problem is that the vertical stabilizer might not be exactly centered. That might be a thing. Okay, the yaw is tending to one side, and we see the rudder going off to one side as well, so let me just allow it to use the RCS for now. Oh, 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 I uh, need to take it off the caps lock. Oh, we're going awry, awry, awry. We are going awry. Gosh darn it. Get back over there, get back over there. Well, it does seem that we have a peculiar problem with the yaw, don't we? At least in this phase. Eventually it'll start pitching down, which will give the vertical stabilizer more authority. But this is very awkward right now. So, still some problems to work out, clearly. Got through the part I was having trouble with before, but now we've got other issues. And we're going to run out of propellant. And yeah, that's a strong yaw. Maybe I'll just get rid of the far aerodynamic model on that as well. Honestly. Well, center mass is in front of center of lift. Pretty high up though. I suppose it's because of the elevon deflection that the center of lift is that far down. Yeah. Uh, it wobbles all over the place because of the control surfaces. Anyway, that I'll say is not decisive. On the bright side, us flipping like this is actually good for recovery. We don't want to be in a flat spin, but I think I can recover this, maybe. Oh, no, don't go there. That's the bad place. Oh no, that's the bad place. That's flat spinning. Oh, we're flat, flat spinning, yeah. Uh, spoke too soon. Oh, there's prograde, prograde, please. Please, I need you. Oh no, recovery to prograde did not work. Oh no. Well, it gets destroyed properly, so anyway, more work needs to be done. But, you know, we got a good launch view at least. <laughs> Launching works nicely. 
return not so much still so that's the progress report so far and with that i'll say thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time